called this is called a TS bugger. Now it's kind of strange, you know, teaching somebody is, is something as simple as a, a, a woolly bugger, but this is a little different. It's a little more complicated. This one has no bead head on there. The one that you see there has a bead head, and it's called the TS2 bugger for some reason. This this uh, this fly was originated by um, Lincoln Gray, not Lance Gray himself. So uh, Lance is the one doing the club meeting. Right? Yeah, Lance is the one that's doing the club meeting. They're like twins. Are they? Yeah. Are they twins? Okay, cool. Anyway, I start it right about mid mid shank because I'm going to be tying the tail on right there. My best friends are twins. <clears throat> Put that off. And the first thing I tie in is the. You using red thread? Yes. Okay. I use red thread on all my flies. <laughs> Do you really? Yeah. But how does he know it's red? He doesn't know, he doesn't know it's red. No, he doesn't know it's red. Now, all, all, the, all the flies that we purchased, I don't know if this is. Because uh, I didn't get any fly tying instructions on this. But all the flies we purchased had the uh, hackle tied in facing flat like this. And I don't know if that's a particular reason for it. But it's tied flat over the back. And it's tied almost the shank length. So if you look at it, it's tied the shank length back over here. And it's tied on there flat. Kind of like a, a, I don't know, like a spoon laying over the the back of it. So I try to get it that way. So it's not on edge, it's actually flat. It's not on edge, it's, and it's not rolled or anything like that. Almost all of the flies that we purchased were, seemed to be flat across the back. And I think that's why they call it the trailing shuck, or that's why I'm assuming it's called the trailing shuck, TS bugger. Does it have a stem in there? Yes, it has a stem in there. I tie in the whole tip. Okay. How do you fish it then? You just cast it out uh -huh. and bring it back it and bring it back for the strip pause. Okay. You know, just a strip pause. So it's just a small tuft, it's just a small tuft of uh, this cinnamon colored cinnamon colored uh, of marabou. And I call it cinnamon colored marabou because that's what it says on the package. <laughs> Pinch that in right on top. Does it look red to you? <laughs> Actually, this looks very close to the exact same color as burnt orange, but... What kind of feather would yeah. you have on the back of that? What's that? What kind of feather do you have on that you tied on your first? It, oh, I'm sorry. The first feather I tied on is a grizzly marabou... A grizzly marabou okay. feather. Nice All right? Grizzly marabou, yeah. Yep. looks a more like chickaloo. Yeah. Yeah. It, well... Uh, from J Fair, yeah. J Fair, it's grizzly marabou, and I don't know what oh. what fowl it comes off of, but it's dyed chartreuse. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a chartreuse colored one. Like now the color that says on the on the on that hex pattern, it says it's yellow, but I know they use I know they use uh, the the stuff that comes from J Fair, and I did not see any yellow. <coughs> well, what kind of a feather is the cinnamon one? The cinnamon is marabou. Just, oh, it's marabou. Okay. Yeah, it's just a cinnamon colored marabou. This is one of my used ones, but uh, what I use what I use is the ones with the very thin tips on there because I'm not so concerned about it pulsing like that. If I want to use marabou that pulses, I use this stuff. Okay, this is the stuff I use on my. Wooly buggers and crystal buggers, the blunt stuff, the stuff I use that just I just want a little definition are the tip portions of it, the ones where the tips are a little lot more hard, I would say. All right. The next thing I tie in after that is the rib. Now, this people will tell you how to tie wooly buggers and crystal buggers and everything. And there are several different ways to tie in woolly buggers, crystal buggers. 
but I recommend that on no matter which way you tie it in, always tie in a wire rib. And the reason for that is I used to tie my crystal buggers with no rib. There was no need to because I would just tie in the body and then I'd spiral it to the front if I had a bead on there or not, just end it right there and then tie it off and that would be the end of it. But sooner or later the, the cord gets wet, it gets, I don't know, stretchy or something like that, but the body gets loose. And when the body gets loose, then it just kind of starts to slide and sag off of the back end of the hook. And you don't want to do that. So if you get, you, you don't want that to happen. So if you tie in a wire rib and go through it with a wire rib, no matter what the body is made out of, the body will always stay in the same spot you tied it. You do that for all your woolly buggers. All the woolly buggers and all the crystal buggers now. Even if it's got, whether it's got a hackle or not, okay? <coughs> Now this stuff here is called, it's called long shuck because it, it's further away from the center core. And what it is, is it's just a uh, metal, metalized, uh, uh, I don't know, mylar type stuff just wound in the... In the uh, Almost looks like a crystal chenille. It is crystal chenille. It's, it's crystal chenille, but uh, if you look at uh, J. Fair's material, a lot of his material is not like this. The stuff that has this shiny stuff in there is called glimmer. Mm. Okay, the other stuff is just called, um, I, I don't know, crystal chenille, I think. And, but this stuff, all the stuff that has this metalized, really sparkly stuff in there is called glimmer. And the only thing he has in me medium olive anymore is uh, the glimmer stuff. So, I tie that in right after I tie in my rib. Okay, and this is pretty much how I would tie almost all of my woolly buggers. And this is just speaking for um, woolly buggers in general. If you want to tie in flash that goes down the back side of the tail to add flash in the tail, I would tie it in. Even if you don't really need it because it's always easier to cut it out afterwards if you don't want it on there than it is to try and add it and you need it. You know, some, you're going to tie it without it and sooner or later somebody's going to say, oh, it's got a little flashaboo in the tail for the one that's catching all of the fish. So it doesn't make a difference to me, but I think uh, most people tend to look at it and say, well, maybe it's because my bugger didn't have flash in the, in the, in the tail. So now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm wrapping the body forwards uh, move my thread close to the eye and then I'm sweeping it back after every turn. Are these touching turns? No, they're not touching turns. Okay. That's why you need the wire wire on there. If you don't, if they're not touching, they will actually get loose and then they will just actually fall back and slide off the back end of the hook. They're not touching turns because I don't want this to be densely packed. I don't, and I don't want it to go all the way up to the hook guy. If you can take a look at it, you can see that I'm, I'm about one and a half to two uh, gaps behind the hook guy. And that's where I stop it. Put a couple of wraps around there. And then just clip it off at that point. Alright, this is the part. A lot of, there's a lot of different ways to put on your hackle, okay? Now, I'm using a burnt orange saddle hackle, okay? And the way I, the way I gauge the, the hackle is by putting it over the body and making sure that it sticks out just a little bit beyond the, the glimmer. <clears throat> this is a little on the short side, but it'll work. No. The way I prep this feather is if you take a look at it like that, I will clip the bottom side of it, but the top side I'm going to strip. I'm going to strip just a short amount of it on there. And what I do is I catch those little barbs on the bottom of the, on the, bottom of the hook shank, right there. And then that'll allow it to bite in, and the flat spot on the top 
will allow it to start off without twisting. Oops. Come on. Okay, you want it to come out. The bad part about using a saddle hackle like this is sometimes during the middle of the body it will twist on you. And the reason, the other reason to have the wire rib on this, on a woolly bugger, if you're tying it this way, and especially this way, is you need to have this to tie down your hackle, okay? Not only to reinforce the body. Right up in front, I'll take two wraps in front, and then right here, I'll start spiraling it back fairly rapidly. I don't want too many wraps of hackle on there. So I want about four or five wraps of hackle. Otherwise, it's more, it, it tends to be more hackle. Now, you see what happened? The saddle hackle turned around, and it's facing the opposite direction right now. It doesn't make any difference to me, but a lot of times I like the hackle to be facing backwards. And I'll hold it underneath. Then you take the wire. and tie that in. Now you can't, once you tie it in, you can't release that wire. You have to keep it under tension, otherwise your hackle will come loose. How many turns is the back on the hackle? Do you I make? only use one, because I figure, I figure it's going to, uh, as I go around, it's going to trap it all the way as it's going around. I only use one wrap, but sometimes, if you want to, you can put two to make sure that that hackle doesn't come undone. Now... The wire going between the space of the crystal somewhere? Yeah. Now, as I'm going like this, I'm doing this not only to not trap down the hackle fibers, but I'm also trying to not, not map down the little uh, crystal chenille points that are sticking up. So I'm trying, to, I'm trying to weave it back and forth in and out of there so that my crystal chenille stays puffy and my hackle stays puffy. Now, when I come through here, I like to come through under the front of the of the hackle and give it one to two turns of wire behind the uh, in front of the hackle itself and then I'll come in and I'll trap it down with the uh, with the thread. Now I use wire cutters to cut my hackle because I like my scissors and I like my scissors an awful lot. It work real well for me. Now I'm going to whip finish it, and I usually do a five or six turn whip finish, and then I'll put another one on right behind it because I don't head cement my flies. Do you put any weight on this fly? Not. Because the flies, the flies that I used didn't have any weight on them at all. I don't know if, I don't know if they do put any on there because I didn't take them apart. But the ones I saw didn't have a bead head, and they also didn't have any weight that I could see on it. And that's basically it. The TS bugger. Well, it's got a simple fly too. Huh? Yeah. Well, bugger is a simple fly.